Yeah, it, it it must have been way later because I wasted two hours of my life. Thanks, Bella, for letting me let me know on that one. But um, I was there at four forty five on my phone as well as on my computer waiting for it, and we were literally having a, a live stream for two hours during that. Yeah, so this has just come up now. Okay. Yeah, that's just coming out now. So when did he do it is the question. Let's hear what he had to say because here it is. Okay, so it's just been posted now. Let's listen to Micah. Financial Services Company 2. Thank you, Nationwide. Let's get right into it, Cowboy Nation. Yeah, let's get right into it. Week three NFL. JD Sports, Sports. appreciate it. Oh my gosh, it was a wild one. Uh, Pretty bizarre. So obviously, we're going to start off with Cowboys. Pretty bizarre. Ravens. Um, How would I, well, let's just start like this. How would I describe the start of my season? I would say the start of the season has been extremely humbling. Um, We fell short after not starting great. Um, Didn't put ourselves in the best situations. Um, But, you know, I would still say I'm still positive because. Everyone is still coming in saying, you know, we're going to get better. We're going to keep learning. We're going to keep growing. And those are all positive signs. But obviously, man, I would say that fourth quarter said a lot, man, when, you know, there was a lot more positivity. There was a lot of things going in. Everyone's starting to do their job. Everyone working in unison. Um, so we can get that fourth quarter for every quarter. Byron, appreciate you know, Super Chat. Be great, man. We just got to keep locking in and just keep getting better, man. I think, you know, it's always a great thing to have these trials and tribulations early, right? And, you know, even to the people, man, I said we're being tested, man. We're getting tested into our faith, our beliefs. You know, I, there's not a person, you know, in the Bible that wasn't tested. And, you know, I look at it the same way with this season, man. So far we've been tested, and it seems like, you know, things just aren't going our way. But I think it's very fixable, man. We just got to keep our faith in line, keep our faith in with each other, and trusting always into the higher purpose because uh, we can always come together. We can always be together. But as long as our faith still lies with our brother and we still know that we can count on one another, we're going to get better, man. And, you know, this this loss hurts and is good, but, man, these are all learning lessons, man. Um, failure is always learning. When you fail, you're learning. So, you know, for me, at least, man, every time I'm failing, like, how can I get better? How can I get better? How can I get better? How can I do better? And then, you know, with everyone adapting that mindset, man, how can I get better? How can I do better? Because I don't want it, the guy next to me let down. It's always very positive. So, you know, start season hasn't been great. But like I said, it's been humbling. Um, you know, this is our test. Because without a test, there is no testimony, man. I still have dreams of being a Super Bowl champion. I still have dreams and aspirations of, you know, going as far as I can into this, this year and this this year and obviously reaching that Super Bowl. So, you know, there is no testimony without there being a test. And right now we're being tested and we have to keep showing up, keep getting better to pass this test, man. Until we pass this test, we mm-hmm. can't get to where we want to go. But, you know, a lot of everyone's wondering, man, I was expressly talking on the sideline. Um, you know, it, sum it up like this, man. There, there's high expectations, man. And when tensions are high, mm-hmm. feelings are high, emotions are high. We all get like this in life. And, you know, we want to pull the best out of each other, whether it's the best player on the team, um, whether it's, you know, role player, special teams player, whatever. We always want the best for everyone on the team. And, you know, there's a standard. We want to get that standard done. And I just felt like, you know, I was expressing how I felt, man. And, you know, as a leader, I shouldn't be doing that. I should always lower my tone and talk to people uh, a certain way. And, you know, I always apologize for that. You know, there's never no one right when Y'all thoughts are high, so far? intentions high, and emotions are high. So it's something that we're all going to get better from. And, you know, I even said, we don't need everyone to be a Superman. And, you know, everyone means that is, right? We just need everyone working in unison, everyone working together, right? We don't need one person to save the world. Um, we don't need two people to save the world or three people. We need everyone together, right? The Avengers, 
I always look at it like the Avengers, really, right? You know. Okay, oh, hold, on, hold on. Captain America couldn't do it by himself. Captain America and Thor couldn't do it. Um, Why am I more pissed off than Micah Parsons is about them losing? Does that look like a guy? Does that look like a guy who got molly whopped two weeks in a row? That your defense is literally the worst defense in football at the moment. That we're literally getting trolled by the New York Giants, and we have a game on Thursday. I, I'm, I'm asking for a friend here. I, I I know how I feel when I lose. In anything. He's talking about the Avengers. We are so far away from being the Avengers. Are you kidding me? Okay, let's go on. Captain America, Hawkeye, Black Widow, none of them could do it. You know, it took all of them together. You had Doctor Strange, you had, you know, all of them together, right? It takes a whole village to do this right. And it's the same thing. Like football, man, it takes all of us to do this right to be able to win and come out on top. You know, and uh, you know, and some fans just question how I fit, and people feel like I should be at linebacker, and people feel like, like you always gotta look at it. like everyone's always due to their opinion, and you can have your opinion, but you know, the things that me and Zim do, I mean, we saw flashes of it with me over the center and things like that, but we can't get everything until we stop the run, man. And that just hones on to That's me setting great edges, me and Law setting great edges. Us playing strong in our A-gaps, tackling, getting second long, third and long, you know, forcing the game into our hands to where we can utilize that. People are game playing, so we can't utilize that. So we have to do a better job of stopping the run and getting to situations that we need to get to to have a whole a higher amount of success. And we will do that, and we will fix that. Zim knows we're going to fix it. I believe we're going to fix it. Our leadership council believes we're going to fix it. You know, so as long as we still believe anything's you can accomplish anything. I mean, let's like, like, like honestly, like look across the league. Think about how many great teams, right? The great teams right now. There's a lot of great teams right now. There are one and two. Cowboys right? aren't are one of them. You, you think oh, about it, right? Oh, you mean there are one and two. It, okay. It does not define where you are right now. Like, where you're at right now and where you're going to be, it never defines it. Like, the 49ers, one and two. The Ravens are one and two. Um, Dolphins, one and two. Falcons are one and two. Browns, one and two. Raiders, one and two. Patriots, Broncos, Cardinals, Rams, Colts, Giants, Panthers, Bears, right? And these are all playoff caliber teams. It's the NFL. Like, people don't realize how hard it is to win. Like, the Raiders come off uh, up. Okay. I'm going to say that there's also turnover, okay? Because you could look and say a couple years ago, the Giants winning a playoff game, you know, were a great team. And then they go through the next year, last year, and they're terrible. Some of that is the natural attrition rate in football. That teams, it's hard to be a playoff team. 50% of the teams that make the playoffs don't the next year. You're under the assumption that San Francisco, that Dallas, and you know uh, so some of the other teams that are losing, how do we know that the Detroit Lions aren't this year's New York Giants? But go on. Come back, win against the Raiders, and lose to an 0-2 Panthers team. Had, would anyone guess that? No, but it's the National Football League. Like, you can't predict everything that happens, you know, and, you know, in the league. Like, you can't. Like, that's what there's coaching for. That's what there's schemes for. Like, coaching matters so much more than people believe, man. I always say great coaching will always triumph great talent. And you look at the past couple Super Bowls. It's been like the Eagles had probably the most talented team the year before that, and Patrick Mahomes won. Um, last year, the San Francisco 49ers, without a doubt, probably had the more talented team, and the Kansas City Chiefs won. I'm not saying neither team's coaching um, have been bad, but at the end of the day, right, coaching truly matters. Talent will always, you know, triumph that, right? And, you know... And you know what also will make me believe that, you know, we're going to get ahead of this, right? 
my quarterback, right? He said, jump off if you want to. He said the same thing in leadership council. I, yeah, I agree with that. Jump off if you want to. <laughs> he said the same thing today to the guys, right? Jump off if you want to, bro. I have no, I have full belief in this guy, right? Like I said, man, I know what he's been through, through the injuries, the triumphs, the trials and tribulations. Look where he at now. He's going to overcome everything, right? I think he's so much bigger than what this is, and he's going to get us to where we need to go. I mean, not once has any game has he's given up. Um, I just think, man, like I said, he's just, and then you could look at the CD, him and CD missed the whole training camp. I remember both man, of who's that on? missing a training camp. And he said it took him so long to get back into, you know, playing formation. That's all this is, you know, the connection, you know, getting timing and things down. That's why training camp is five weeks long, right? There's a whole period. It's like a five week game period and it's damn near live practice every day. So it's so many things that you're working on, timing, clicking, things like that, that you're working on in this time period. So it's not like this is just some out of norm. We're just starting mm -hmm. this transition a little bit later than we want to. But you're happy this stuff happens earlier versus last year where we had so much success and we're like, man, the Cowboys are so good. And we hit this period where we're like, oh, snap, we're really struggling. We're like, we don't know what's going on. And then you go in the playoffs and you're, 13, you're 12 and 5 and you're high ranked C and you're losing the first round, right? And because you couldn't stop a certain thing. So now we're one and two. We're on the opposite end where we're not starting so fast and we have this opportunity to keep getting better, keep getting better. Lock this, you know, this difficulty a phase that we're in and get better from that. And I think that's always positive, right? When you figure out what's wrong and people are attacking earlier and you keep getting better and better. So then when you start going on your run, you feel invincible, right? It's all about clicking, right? Everything is all about clicking in the NFL at the right time to go on your run. It's never they're usually the best teams. And sometimes the best teams usually do because they're clicking at the right time. But at the end of the day, you know, that's what this journey is about. And right now, we just got to find our groove. We got to find our spot. We got to get into rhythm. That's all this is. And it's trials. Right now, we're guaranteed an opportunity Thursday to go out there and go against a very good Giants team that came off a great Browns win. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of people, you know, went against Daniel Jones, and he just had a great game against the Browns with Malik Neighbors going crazy. Malik Neighbors is legit. I, I Like, he's legit. Him and... Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Marvin Harrison are doing their big one. Like, these are legit caliber receivers, and I could see him, his confidence growing, Daniel Jones' confidence growing, him coming back, getting a rhythm off mm -hmm. the ACL I think it's night and day from game three to game one. Even with the training camp, live action football is completely different. Different reads, different shows and tells, and things like that is going in the game. A lot goes into this football process. I feel like people just figure, like, Football players just wake up and say, hey, we're going to go get ready for practice. No, I mean, a lot of goes into this or get ready to go straight into the game. Pre the preparation, the film, the endless walkthroughs, the key tells, the details, keys. I mean, everything that we're looking at is going through. Everything that's put in, we're trying to master in a short week. You know, it's, it's only so much you can do in that short week to prepare yourself to get ready for this game. You know, and, you know, and, and you look at all these one and two teams, right? Like, I mean, the 49ers were up in, you know, each of those games and end up losing, like, that's what happens with injuries and a lot of trials, man. Like, you know, the Ravens were up on, you know, the Raiders, and they probably shouldn't have lost that game, you know? So it's it's an up and battle, right? And we still almost was able to win that game against the Ravens, and, then you know, that would have been an amazing comeback. But, man, that triumph for the team to come together and where we were at and, you know, mm -hmm. heads may have not been low, but we weren't at our best. Right? are so much more segment, just like how Nationwide is so much more than a great insurance company, right? Um, someone who's doing so much more than her team, and I'm shouting out, is Malik Willis. Like, Jordan Love was able to sit down, right? And, you know, obviously, his knee injury or whatever, and he's still rehabbing back. But Malik Willis is stepping up, and he got two oh, wins, right? So you're talking about a Packers team who trained mm -hmm. for a guy, and this is why we say coaching matters. Mm. Coaching is a great magnitude of what the player yeah. defines but i don't I'm care throughout my career i've always had great co i've always been around great coaches Man, who like always made me and pushed me to be better right hmm. so you're talking about a guy who got traded right before the season right his starting quarterback oh. goes down at the end of the game in week four and he's forced to say hey i gotta step up and be a guy and goes out beat a great tennessee team and you know, he beats another team this weekend. So what does that tell you, right? Coaching. And he's playing high-level football. I mean, went 13 for 19, over 200 yards passing, 73 rushing yards, <clears throat> rushing, yeah, rushing yards, and two total touchdowns. 
And obviously that Packers defense is playing at a high level. So it goes to show you what coaching really means. So a guy who's coming late, you know, probably didn't build the same relationship, you know, with his players is coming in and putting in great time, you know, and that is such a, that is such a great thing because, you know, in this league, it's tough to stay on the team consistent. So you got a guy who's been drafted Tennessee. There's like, ah, he probably doesn't fit us. And to go out there and get two NFL wins, probably more wins, you know, with the Packers than he probably did with, you know, Tennessee it really shows you great amount of coaching, triumph, trials and tribulations. And you can't, you can't be more happy for a guy like him, you know? And Okay. Um, Do y'all want to hear more of, of Micah Parsons on here? Um, I want to hear. We sucked. We are disappointing, and we have to do better. That that that's what I want to hear. I, I hear. Oh well, you know, San Francisco is one and two, and Baltimore is one and two. After they molly whopped us and got up off the mat, you know, they were up against the Raiders. And I, I don't care about them. I don't care about them. I I I want to hear. It's a short week, and we have to find a way to turn our shit around. We have to figure a way to turn our shit around. We're playing a New York Giant team that got a win, that's feeling good about themselves, and we have not been playing. We are not living up to the expectations that I put on myself or our team has for itself, and we have to go out here and do better. I just hear all this stuff like, oh, well, you know, everybody else is having problems, and it doesn't feel like there's a sense of urgency to turn this shit around. And that there's no, you know, I, I, I would be, you guys know how salty I am. I told you, I, I am so salty that I need to be one of those salt block licks for a cow. I don't know if you've ever been in a country, but out in the fields, they have these big white blocks of salt for the cows. To, yeah, and that's how salty I am. That's how salty I am. And I, I, I'm not getting paid millions of dollars to be out there on the field. But I feel like the Ravens kicked my teeth in. And I feel pissed off. I, 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 go on, Micah. You know, you're talking about a Packers organization. It's probably like, man, you know, our best start is probably if we're one and two, if we can sneak off one of these wins. And, you know, now they're a two and one team. And Jordan Love can possibly come back this week. Malik Willis can start again. Um, and, you know, it could potentially do that again. Like, so it goes to show you, man, the coaching really matters. And it, are you throwing your coach on the boat, bus? It, man, because, I mean, let's look at the Steelers, too, with Justin Fields. Justin Fields is 3-0, right? We thought Russell uh, Wilson was going to be the starter. Russell Wilson been banged up. And look at uh, Justin Fields and what he's been able to accomplish. Coaching really matters. Great defense, great coaching. Um and you're talking about, you know, where Caleb Williams is struggling. A little so, wait, 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 hold it. So, are you saying that our fault is, our, our problem is the coach? I mean, is that, is that what we're getting? You're praising these other teams. You're saying Green Bay without their quarterback, you know, that, they, that they're doing a great coaching, right? Isn't that what you're saying? You, you're saying that the, the, the Steelers are 3-0. and 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 it's great coaching. We're one and two. And then, so are you saying that coaching is our problem? Did 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 anybody else get that? I, I'm I'm asking. Did, does anybody else think think the same thing that he's blaming the coaches? A little bit, obviously, because he's a rookie and it takes time to be dominant in this league. But you know, I mean, they 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 you know they basically told Justin Fields he basically couldn't read coverages, he couldn't win games, and he's going to an organization who's a winning organization has a great you know, head coach and coaches around him. And he's been able to win three games. And a lot of people went against Justin, man. And, you know, so you couldn't be more happy for guys like this in these better situations. I don't want to be happy about those guys and the other teams in their situation. I want to be happy about my Cowboys. Or maybe it could be the organization. Sometimes it's really, like, we like to blame the players, but sometimes it's really the organization and things around them that doesn't allow people to access the full, tap into their full potential. And and that's the uh, truth, man. I, you see it all the time, right? 
guys go from different organizations and go to other like Andy Dalton. You know, with it, will we see the same thing with Bryce Young? Like we 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 I, don't know I, we're going to hit on a little bit later, I, but I mean, we gotta we gotta you know. Oh, hold on, wait. It, 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 Am, am I getting this wrong? Am, am I taking it wrong? Fans, tell me. Tell me. Washington is is kicking ass. They're up twenty seven to thirteen right now. Okay. Now you have to wonder. Th- th- this is one of those cases where you look at this now, and maybe you have to say the Bengals are not a good team anymore. But be that as it may, it sounds like he's talking and praising other teams about their coaching and organization. I think Micah Parsons is basically saying. It's the Cowboys franchise. Being considered, Andy Darwin's been around, you know, so it doesn't surprise me. He's used to seeing different looks, and he's been in the league for a very long time. But, you know, is Bryce Young eventually going to get a fresh start? I mean, we don't know. Like, um, you know, if they decide to keep going with Andy, you know, but it, it's great, a learning opportunity, learning tool to be under a guy like Andy Darwin, who has a lot of experience. You know, you kind of look at the Drake May and Jacoby Reset. Jacoby Reset has a bunch of. You know, Noah I Brown was a touchdown. To pass that on, so I think you know they're trying to. You know, they started backwards with it, but you know they're trying to incorporate that now to get Bryce Young ready for the future. But you just never know. But that's just an example of you know guys in these situations wow. that you you truly never know. Is it is it dumb or is it the system? You know, um, he's drinking a lot of water or whatever that is, and then. I mean, look at a team like the Falcons. They have a couple close calls, but this Falcons team is a very legit team. I mean, I mean, you look at that game against the Chiefs. I mean, comes down to why again? What whether you say it's going to be a call? I mean, I mean, I for sure think this. Like he's obviously making contact. I mean, the last couple games. I mean, that's contact before the ball is there. I mean, by rule that. But this Falcons team could be a two-on-one team. Any like everything goes into it, right? Cause I mean, coaching players, a lot goes into winning. I I can't emphasize enough how hard it is to truly win in this league. Like it, it's one of the hardest things you can do. And the fact if you get a lot of wins, and I would say even myself, man, I've been spoiled, man. I've been around some great comp, some great high-level Hall of Famers, great high-level players, and we've been able to win a lot of games. And now. And, you know, talent's been getting us over that hump, right? Talent has always kind of been, you know, getting us over that edge. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay, so let's let's analyze this for a second here. Here's what he said, just said. He just praised all these teams from Carolina with Andy Dalton and experience and everything else, talking about how the Steelers are playing and saying that it's coaching, right? And now... He's saying that our talent before got us over. So it was never coaching. So now he's saying we don't have the talent. He's throwing the Cowboys organization under the bus. Now, I want to say that this is by Bill Barnwell. No team had five touchdowns on each of their first drives in 22 or 23. Okay? All right? And now two teams have done that the last two weeks, the Saints versus the Cowboys and the Bills versus the Jaguars, although the Jaguars are getting back up off the mat and and actually making some points. I honestly feel like, and maybe I'm taking this the wrong way, but Micah Parsons is deflecting and saying, coaching sucks and our front office isn't putting people on the field. Go on, Micah. I got to listen to more of this. So, you know, now that we may have not have, you know, Probably the more talented roster we had in past about overall roster of different players and attributes like that, you know, it's hard to. So now we got to really click on to the details and do all the little things. So that way, you know, our skill sets and what we can accomplish can go further, right? And we're still a young team, right? EK is still, this is still his first year. Demo and Mary's, you know, really they're. They're really rookies. The first year is really playing. You need to clean this uh, up, Micah. I'm- you know, we got a lot of guys that, you know, it's our first time really start a rookie corner. So a lot of a lot of things go into this, man, learning tools. So we're just going to keep learning and growing. Um, you know, you know, a lot of guys are getting thrown into the fire, and we love it. You know, it's about what you're going to come out after the fire is burnt. Are you going to be standing tall or are you going to be burnt? And, you know, I think a lot of guys we have on our team in the locker room, they're going to be standing tall. <clears throat> Mm. You know, we were going to have Darius Slay on. 
we were gonna have Darius Slay on, you know, um, the show today, but obviously with my short week, uh, you know, I had a lot of more meetings and filmed to go over today, and um, he wasn't able to come on the show. But we'll even break down their game uh, today too. I mean, what they had past weekend. Well, it was a close <sighs> game. I thought it was a really good game. You know, Burrow um, gets set. Barkley. I mean, he he's following suit. What I think he's going to be. He's going to be an All Pro. Um, he's probably going to be Offensive Player of the Year, uh, most likely. Um, he has a chance to keep going for MVP. I mean. The guy's been electric ever since he had some talent around him. I mean, mm. it's like he hit a second juice, man. A another guy who y'all say he's battled injuries and things like that along his career, and he's gotten his fresh start, and he looks like, you know, rookie year Saquon, second year Saquon. I mean, it just oh no, it, 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 this is um, we've only listened to eighteen minutes of it. It goes on for thirty seven. Like. You talking about a team that's giving him the carry, you know, splitting his time. I mean, everything, you know, utilizing every asset, every capability. I mean, he's looking so far like the best player on that offense. I mean, so explosive, so fast. I mean, I know he's my Penn State buddy, but I mean, look at look at I mean, look at him, man. He's been <laughs> night and day since he's been there. And, you know, um there they said there's been a stat about Derek Carr. Targeting the corners, Quinyan Mitchell, Quinyan Mitchell, um, three for five, twenty nine yards. Um, Darius Slay, one for two, nine yards. You know, QB rating all under sixty five. And you know, this is what I would say, right? Uh, and the same thing with us. With like, the Saints are a very good team. And CJ Gardner Johnson said they're pretenders. They're not. They ain't no contenders. They're pretenders. And they have Derek Carr. Remember. <laughs> I don't know who C.J. Gardner think he is, bro. I mean, we've been dealing with this cat for a while. I mean, we just got to be a little bit real right here. Like, I think Derek Carr has validated himself way before C.J. has ever done. Like, to in the most respectful way, I'm not taking away anything, but Derek Carr okay. has been a you know, Pro Bowl quarter. Uh, All right. I, thank, Queen, Queen Bella, thank you for letting me know that Mike did his podcast, and it was definitely a lot later than it was supposed to be. Um, I think I would have been better off had he not done this podcast this week because I, I, I can't say that listening to that made me feel any better. I'm hearing that other teams that are winning right now, that it's coaching, that when we were good before, that it was the talent. So you're saying that we don't have the talent right now and that the coaching is not good enough, and you're praising other teams when you have to play on Thursday. The day after tomorrow, you will be flying to New York. You've got today, you've got tomorrow, and then Wednesday's a travel day and Thursday's a game day. And we're talking about... And not even seeming to be upset, okay? I, I, I don't even know what to say on this. So may, may, somebody talk me off the ledge, but that did not make me feel any better seeing and hearing what he had to say. You know, we're sitting here breaking down and talking about C.J. Gardner, you know, saying that the uh, New Orleans Saints are pretenders. They got uh, Derek Carr, and we got Molly Watt by him. Um I would be, I would actually feel some kind of way knowing that I got my teeth kicked in and that six straight drives to start the game that New Orleans beat us in my house. Six straight drives. They kicked my teeth in, and now I'm talking about the Eagles going on the road and being able to stop them and shut down Derek Carr. I'm sorry. I'm the Salt Lake guy, okay? I'm, you know what? I'm going to go to Farm and Factory or whatever it is. I'm going to get me a big – I'm going to buy me one. I'm going to buy a big Salt Lake, and that, that's how, how, how salty – you, you know that I'm going to be. This is not good, guys. This is, Mark, we need Bill Belichick. I, 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 the game, I think, may have passed him by. And 
I, 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 you know, and Bill Belichick, I, 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 I it, it's, it's too, the, the, you're too invested in this season. It's too late to change now. You, you just are. Um, but this is bad. Yeah, Bill Belichick would never allow, no, he would not allow him to do podcasts. Giants coaching, Dallas coaching. You know, we, we got to get a win this week. We, we literally have to get a win this week. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. Um, wow. Micah making zero impact. He had five tackles. He's had one sack on the season so far. The defense looks completely lost. They are literally yelling and screaming at each other on the sidelines and getting nothing done. And look 